Hello, I'm Dr. Chandler. Welcome to your course video lecture notes on the mechanics of our brain cells, the neuron. Our brains consist of two halves or hemispheres. These hemispheres are not symmetrical. For example, the left hemisphere usually has a larger temporal area where our speaking and understanding of language is located. Here is a diagram showing hemispheric specialization or lateralization. To remember that the left side has more responsibility for language and logic, think math, remember the letter L for left, language, and logic while the right hemisphere is responsible for spatial perceptions, music, and art, generally. The hemispheres of the brain communicate through a bridge called the corpus callosum, which means a hard body. It's a hard body of nerve fibers. Now you can truthfully say in a personal ad <laughs> that you have a hard body. We've discussed neural pathways. Now we'll look at the microscopic level of the brain to learn about these pathways, the actual cells of our brain called neurons. You'll need to know the parts of the neuron. We'll start with the axon. The axon in red works like the barrel of a shotgun. I'll come back to this. The handle of the shotgun is the soma, or the cell body of the neuron. The soma in green takes care of the cell, making sure it has nutrients and excreting waste. In the soma, or cell body, as in every cell, is a nucleus, lighter green, which contains chemical molecules called DNA. The DNA, or diribonucleic acid, in every cell nucleus is the recipe or instructions for the cell. The DNA informs the cell what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. If any part of these instructions are damaged, the cell will not work properly, which is disastrous for the individual. Around the soma are dendrites in purple from the French for teeth. Think dental or dentine. If I had been the one who first saw these dendrites under a microscope, instead of the teeth of a circular saw, I might have named these purple parts of the neuron branchites as they grow out from the soma and seem more like branches to me. These dendrites are the triggers of the shotgun. If the dendrites pick up a neural signal, from a nearby neuron, it is called an action potential. These dendrites are the triggers of the shotgun. If the dendrites pick up a neural signal, called an action potential, from neural cells pressed along each dendrite, the neural cell will fire, causing a chain reaction of chemical and electrical signals to travel down the length of the neural cell through the axon, and wrapped around the axon of the neuron are insulating cells known as myelin sheath. You can see how they grow like little sausages, and in a cross section, you can see how the myelin grows in layers surrounding the axon. The myelin speeds the action potential down the axon, and here are the cross sections as if it were turned toward you surrounding the axon. When the myelin helps the action potential speed down the axon, it goes to the terminal fibers colored solid light blue. These are sometimes called axon fibers. At the ends of the terminal fibers, we see little mushroom-like shapes called boutons in dark blue. This part of the neuron was named because bouton is French for buttons, and they appeared to look like buttons to the person who named this part of the neuron. Here's an artist's rendering of the neuron, and we're going to look at this a little bit more closely, and we're going to look at more of these parts. 
when dendrites pick up an action potential whether it is a strong signal from one dendrite or weaker signals from multiple dendrites the action potential is an all or none phenomena kind of like a light switch it is either on or off the action potential travels through the soma to the axon remember the red sausage like covering of the axon called the myelin sheath you will not be tested on the name of the specific cells called Schwann cells that make up the myelin sheath the action potential is speeded along by the junctures at intervals in the myelin sheath these junctures are called nodes of Ranvier the guy who first published his findings must have thought a lot of himself to name this part of all of our brain cells after himself you'll not be tested in this class on what happens at the nodes with positively charged ions flying in and negatively charged ions flying out and vice versa all along the axon at the points of the nodes of Ranvier the nodes of Ranvier along the myelin sheath allow an action potential to travel faster down the axon to the terminal fibers and terminal bouton. Let's examine some diagrams of neurons done by artists. I like this one because of the color coding and because of the nice labels. For instance, axon terminal is labeled transmitters. Dendrites are labeled receivers. There you have the Schwann cells that you will not be responsible to remember, but you will be asked to know that myelin sheath is an insulating fatty layer that speeds transmission, and the nodes of Ranvier is again how the action potential moves faster along there because it, it actually moves along with a chemical electrical signal, which you'll probably have to learn in biology. Here, I'm going to pause to allow you a little time to name the parts. This is called a dendrite. This is known as the nucleus. The purple area is called the soma or cell body takes care of the neuron the yellow part is the axon the green area is the myelin sheath the spaces in the green area are known as nodes of Ranvier. The red part immediately extending from the axon are axon terminals or terminal fibers and the ends of these are called boutons. You know diagrams of neurons are not really very accurate for their dimensions because when you look at a brain, and maybe you've seen one, kind of looking like a cauliflower, what you see is the myelin of many neural cells, not the aggregated somas of the neurons, which you might expect you'd see from the dimensions of these diagrams. You've all actually seen myelin before. When you look into someone's eyes, you really are looking into a part of the brain and seeing the myelin that coats the axons of the neurons of the eyes. Myelin is the whites of the eyes and allows an action potential to travel faster down the axon through the terminal fibers to the bouton. Myelin naturally breaks down and is repaired by directions from the DNA in the cell nucleus. When the myelin doesn't self-repair, we call this disorder multiple sclerosis. MS is so far non-curable and becomes progressively more debilitating over time. Here's my diagram again, and the green area outside is the soma. The green area inside is the nucleus. The purple part 
is the dendrites. You see the red myelin wrapped around the axon. You see the light blue terminal fibers. And here at the bouton, where the dendrites of other neurons are pressed closely around the bouton is the next part of our story. What happens at the junction between the neurons when the neuron fires? Here we focus on the terminal buttons called terminal because they are at the end of the neuron. But what really happens here is more like a train or bus terminal with chemical messengers called neurotransmitters pulling into and out of the Bouton station. Let's look closer at the junction of the sending and the receiving neurons to get a better sense of how neurons communicate with multiple neurons simultaneously. We are looking at a close-up of several synapses at several sending neurons and a receiving neuron. When the first researchers looked at this, they believed that the sending and receiving neurons were touching. Americans simplified the word synapse to snap, as this is what the snap of your jacket does. The two sides connect, but when researchers got a closer look, they discovered that the bouton of the sending neuron and the dendrite of the receiving neuron do not actually touch. There is a small gap or cleft between the neurons. Now this space is called the synaptic gap, gap or synaptic cleft to acknowledge that the synapse is really a misnomer. Looking closely at the terminal fibers and the terminal bouton, you see the vesicles. The word vesicle means little bladders, as they contain the chemical molecules called neurotransmitters. When the neuron fires, the vesicles release the neurotransmitters into the synapse. The neurotransmitters may cross the synapse and bind into the receptor sites of the receiving neuron. Here you see the sending neuron has fired, the action potential has crossed the soma and the axon, facilitated by the myelin sheath and nodes of Ranvier, and causes the vesicles to release their neurotransmitters into the synapse. The neurotransmitters cross the synapse and bind into the receptor sites of the receiving neuron. This causes the receiving neuron to fire. Here's a few pictures, again, showing a close-up of the synapse. And here you see that the neurotransmitters have shapes. Now we'll look at how the neurotransmitters bind into the dendrites of the receiving neuron. This is called the lock and key mechanism because neurotransmitters are chemical molecules and have a shape like every chemical molecule. Number one is the terminal bouton of the sending neuron. Two is the dendrite of the receiving neuron. Three are the neurotransmitters that have been released from the vesicles of the sending neurons bouton. Four are neurotransmitters that do not fit perfectly and thus cannot bind into the receptor sites of the dendrite of the receiving neuron. Five are the receptor sites of the dendrite of the receiving neuron, showing a particular shape that matches a chemical messenger molecule called a neurotransmitter.
The dendrites are fitted with receptor sites that act like locks. Each site has a particular shape that fits a particular neurotransmitter. It's called the lock and key. Like these pictures of a neurotransmitter, where you can see the molecules actually have dimensions. Here you can see the multidimensionality of the molecules that must fit into the three dimensional receptor sites of the receiving neuron. Here you see the receiving neuron picks up the charge from the neurotransmitters binding in the receptor sites. When the receiving neuron fires, the receptor sites release the neurotransmitters back into the synapse where they cross the synapse and are sucked back into the sending neurons vesicles. This is called reuptake. Your body recycles the neurotransmitters multiple times. I'll review this mechanism again. One, the dendrites of the neurons pick up the neural impulse. The action potential moves down the neuron, causing the vesicles to release the neurotransmitters into the synapse. Two, neurotransmitters cross the synapse and bind to the receptor site of the dendrites of the receiving neuron. Three, dendrites of receiving neurons pick up the neural impulse, the neuron fires, and the receptor sites release the neurotransmitters back into the synapse. Four, the neurotransmitters cross the synapse and are reabsorbed into the sending neurons vesicles. This is called reuptake. Here's a list of the actions that you're going to have to make on your uh, next quiz. So make sure to learn this process because we'll be building upon it when drugs are introduced into the system in our study of altered states of consciousness. If you don't learn it, you'll be losing points, not just on this quiz, but on the upcoming uh, quiz. Here is a neuron in the wild. I wouldn't recognize this brain cell if the picture wasn't labeled. I also couldn't tell you which part of the neuron was an axon and which parts were dendrites. Neurons come in different shapes and sizes and they really don't look like the diagrams that we make that are merely models to help us learn the structures and functions of the neuron. Here's a cross-section of brain cells under a microscope. Can you distinguish the parts of the neurons in this picture? The blue colored areas are called glial cells. Glial cells actually make up 90% of the mass of the brain. Currently, information about how glial cells communicate is being discovered. You're responsible to correctly match this list of parts. The sending neuron, the dendrites, the soma, the axon, the action potential, myelin sheath, axon terminal, terminal bouton, or button, vesicles, synapse, receptor sites, node of Ranvier, neurotransmitter, and receiving neuron. I'll give you the diagram and I'll give you the terms and you'll have to match them for your in-class quiz.